Well, scientists with NOAA have been flying specially equipped planes into the eye of hurricanes, really going back to the 1940s. But just last week, a drone was dropped from one of those planes much lower into the storm. Meteorologist Heather Waltman joins us now. And Heather, what can these drones do that man flights can't? Well, Andrea, it's all about gathering as much data as possible, as safely as possible. As you can imagine, flying through the center of a hurricane is no picnic. So for safety, man flights maintain an altitude between 8,000 feet and 12,000 feet. Now, there's a lot of turbulence up there, but there's no risk of being thrown into anything. The problem there is that the most useful data to us needs to be gathered much closer to the ground where there is a much higher risk with flying. NOAA lead scientist Joseph Sion says that's where drones can fill a major need. They can drop down to about a thousand feet without any risk to people and gather information where the ocean meets the air. That's critical for many reasons. First of all, it's evaporation is how the storm um, maintains itself. Secondly, that's all where we live, right? We all live low. So we want to know what the winds are and what the conditions are right at the surface, particularly uh, like as we had with Ian, when these dangerous storms are making landfall. On board a NOAA flight just before Hurricane Ian made landfall in Southwest Florida last week, this is video taken on board. Turbulence was so violent that the plane could only make one pass through the storm. But the drone, which uses artificial intelligence, so no one's controlling it, to seek out the storm center and the peak winds, was able to continue the mission. That data gave never before seen insights into a rapidly intensifying hurricane. So if you now you have measurements, more measurements in an area that's rare, guess what? Our understanding goes higher. And as our understanding goes higher, we can improve the mimicking of those models. So now those models that, uh, that we use to predict hurricane intensity change and track to some degree can get better. And Sion says those improvements are going to take some time. But this drone flight was also sending back data to the plane and to the National Hurricane Center in real time, allowing forecasters and emergency managers to be as prepared as possible. Sion says the top wind speed found by the drone that day was 216 miles per hour at a height of about 2,100 feet. Back to you. Heather.